Hi, I'm Lisa Beeney for the Photographer Academy and this film is about getting started in newborn photography. When you first think about photographing newborns, there's a, a few important things you need to remember. And it really doesn't matter if you're working in your own studio or going to a client's home. If you're working in your own studio, then obviously it needs to be clean and it needs to be warm. There's been a lot of debate about how warm a room should be for a newborn baby. The ideal temperature is one that you feel comfortable at sitting in a short sleeved shirt. If it gets very hot, then it's not good for the baby. And also, if it's very cold, then you'll have trouble getting the baby settled. You also need to think about where the mum can actually sit while the newborn session's going on. And babies will need feeding, so somewhere where the mum can sit in private and feed the baby. The length of time for a newborn session is also quite important. Some of them take three to four hours. It isn't the photography that's the long bit, it's actually getting the baby settled and calm and sleepy. And you should see that in a later film as to quite how we, we do that. But let's just say it does take time. Don't worry if you end up with a baby that really doesn't seem to want to settle. Some do, some don't. If you have a baby that's calm and awake, then I would suggest take some photos of the baby while it's calm and awake, just in case you can never get the little thing to go to sleep. Also, some babies don't like having their clothes taken off. Others are quite happy with that. So it's really a case of working with the baby that you have. You need to think of the information you're going to provide the parents before they get here so that there are no real surprises for them. We ask the parents to bring spare nappies with them and if they're bottle feeding, bring plenty of made up milk with them. We also do let them know that it's going to take kind of three to four hours, absolute max, so that they have allowed that time. And if possible, we avoid having any other children come along with them because if you have a two-year-old who's come along with a newborn baby, then there's no way that a two-year-old is going to keep calm and sit still for kind of three or four hours. And that can be a real disruption to you trying to settle the baby and, and work. You also need to think about, well, you need to make sure that you have insurance. So you need public liability and professional indemnity insurance. Because if somebody trips over your camera bag and drops a baby, then you could be in for one hell of an insurance claim. The other thing to think about is baby safety, that you're looking after somebody's little tiny newborn baby and it's the most precious thing in their lives. Babies, I know everyone jokes about babies bounce, but their bones aren't fully developed, their circulation isn't very good, they're not very good at regulating their own body temperature, so you have to take all of these things into consideration when you're looking after this baby because when the baby's with you, you're looking after them. You must also make sure that you never ever leave a baby unattended, that there is somebody watching the baby. Even newborn babies can wriggle and move a lot and if you've had your own children you know you put them to bed in the cot in the right place at night and when you go next go and see them they seem to have moved halfway across the cot just by wriggling. If they can do that, then they can move off of your bean bag and end up falling onto the floor, which isn't something you ever want to happen. Something we will go into later on the posing side is that a lot of the photos you see online are composite photos. So the baby hasn't been put in that little frog-like position with its head balanced on top of its hands and then photographed. That is made up of a series of several photos and unless you're very confident with what you're doing, I would suggest that to start with you don't try anything like that. The other thing to think about when you're using props is again, could the baby fall? So when you see the photos of a baby hanging from a sling above what looks like nothing, you'll find that the photographer has had a beanbag a couple of inches underneath the baby and has again used composite photo techniques in Photoshop to get rid of that afterwards. It can seem a lot to think about, but newborn babies are really good fun to photograph. And the good thing is that at the end of the day, you get to hand them back and they go away. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs>
the next thing to think about is the kit that you're likely to need for, for newborns. Um, I'm assuming that most people already have cameras and the chances are that you will have plenty of kit and all the right lenses. But I'll just go through the things that I prefer using and the things that I find most useful. The camera I'm using at the moment for my newborns is the Sony A7 II. It's a full frame camera in a quite a compact body but it's one of the mirrorless ones so that gives me the advantage of seeing on the back of the camera exactly what I'm going to get before I press the shutter button. This particular model is a 24 megapixel so again you can blow the photos up quite large. I would say don't get too hung up on how many megapixels your camera is. You need to think about the largest size you're likely to print the results at. And the other camera I use a lot is the Sony A7S, which is only a 12 megapixel camera. But again, the images that you get from that are fine to print as a double page spread in a 14 by 14 inch album. So for the vast majority of what I need, a 12 megapixel sensor is fine. 24 is brilliant, I can just go that bit bigger. The lens that I tend to use for the newborn photography is a, a 24 to 70 zoom. This particular one is f4, so I can get quite a shallow depth of field. So when I'm working, I'll focus on one of the baby's eyes and then try and get the background as out of focus as I can. With the Canon kit I used to use, the lens was a 2.8, but I did find it a bit too soft at 2.8, so tended to use it at f4 anyway. And this camera has image stabilisation built into the lens and the body, which is quite handy. If I'm working at a client's home, I'll try and use window light wherever possible. That means that you can need slightly slower shutter speeds and slightly higher ISOs than you would if you're working with studio lights. If I'm in the studio, I tend to use the Elinchrom Quadras so that I can turn the power right down. The problem with the, the other Elinchrom lights that I've got is that the power setting is too high and I can't turn it down low enough to actually use the aperture settings that I want. If you're working in a client's home and you need a bit more light, you can just use a speed light off camera. And it's never, ever, ever going to be flattering to stick this on top of a camera and point it at a baby and take a photo. So it needs to be off camera and it needs to be softened in some way. The easiest way to actually soften this is to use something like the Lastalight Easy Box. They just pop up like a little reflector thing and your light sits inside it and then you have an off-camera light that's really lovely and soft. What I aim to do with all of the lighting that I use is to try and mimic a big window. So I try and use fairly large light sources that are quite well diffused. If you're using a window, you don't want direct sunlight coming through it because that's going to give you way too much contrast and you'll have all sorts of problems with shadows and things. So if that's the only light source available, I would close the curtains and I would use lighting. You could put neck curtains up in front of it, but again, you need to be obviously aware if it's the client's neck curtains that you've not got flowery patterns appearing over everything um, and that it's not casting horrible shadows or a colour cast onto your, your baby. As a basic setup, I use, as you can see behind me here, two lighting stands and it's an adjustable pole across the top. There's a big bean bag underneath, which I'm sure you'll get to see more of later. On top of that, I normally put a towel, and the reason for that may become very clear a bit later. And then whatever backdrop I'm using goes clips at the top and comes right over the front of the bean bag. The one that's on there at the moment was just a blanket that I bought from British Home Stores. You don't have to go and spend a small fortune on props from specialist prop shops. It's amazing what you can find just walking around like Marks and Spencer's, Dunnell Mill, 
British home stores, quite often in the sale you'll see fluffy blankets and things. Everything that I have is machine washable because after a session it will need washing. It's quite portable. I can fit all of that lot and my camera kit and the lighting kit in the back of a smart car. There's not necessarily room for anything else, but it does all go in there and I would take all of that to a client's home with me. The other things that I find really, really useful, as I get my prop bag here, I have a, a whole selection of these different coloured soft wraps and they can be used to stretch, stretch out over things, you can use them to hide nappies because to start with when I'm photographing a baby I tend to leave the nappy on and get some shots with the nappy on and then take the nappy off. Unfortunately, if a baby's not in a very deep sleep, taking a nappy off will actually wake it up. Um, and I'm sure, as everyone knows, that normally when you take a ba baby's nappy off, they'll either wee everywhere or poo everywhere. But I try and keep fairly neutral colours so that these can be used for either a boy or a girl. And again, these are all machine washable. I have a selection of little hats. Hats have got to be one of the easiest props to use because you can just roll them onto the baby's head while the baby's asleep. So you don't actually have to move the baby. And the less you move the baby and the more variety that you can get while they're asleep, the higher the likelihood of the baby staying asleep. And also it gives you more images that you can then sell to the parents afterwards. You have a little cloth cap which is great for little boys and works really well if you've put the baby into a basket. Little crocheted hat. A lot of these I've bought off of eBay. Um, my mum's also quite good at knitting, so she's knitted some for me. So you can end up with things that are really quite unique. Um, this is another little one out of some really, really soft fabric that works quite well for little baby girls. You then have a selection of little headbands to use. Again, you can pop these on and take these off while the baby's asleep, which makes it really easy. Obviously, the flowery ones are more suitable for little girls. I'm not sure I've met little boys yet that want flowers on their hair. And one of my favourite things at the moment is a little tutu. If you've always wondered how you get a tutu onto a baby, as you can see, it's a straight line. So you don't have to actually put it onto the baby. You just tuck it round them and then ruffle it out to where you want. So I know it's a little baby we have in later for the filming. So hopefully we will get a chance to use that one. I then also have some various softer knitted wraps. Again, you can wrap the baby up in them, you can wrap them round the baby, you can just use them to hide nappies, a bit of a baby that you haven't quite got posed the way you want. Normally, hiding things is the main use of these. We have a few seasonal props as well. And if you have a baby you're photographing in December, you can pop a little Christmas hat on and you may find that you can then sell Christmas cards to the parents because they can send them to all their friends and family of their new little baby. So other things that I use are a basket. This is one that we were given with a Christmas hamper. So it's, again, you don't have to buy expensive things from prop shops. See why I'm not sponsored by any equipment manufacturers, can't you? But and you can use it with furry blankets. As a general rule, if you're looking to buy props, and garden centres are a good place to look. If you're thinking, will a baby fit in it? Use your arm because from your elbow to the top of your hand is about the same length as most newborn babies when they're curled up. So if your arm will fit in it, kind of down diagonal 
then the chances are it will be fine for a baby. Again, safety things you have to watch out for. This has quite sharp little ends all the way around, so I'd normally stuff it full of blankets and towels and things with whichever colour I want left on top so that the baby's not actually in contact with any of the actual wicker work itself because you don't want to give somebody their baby back that's slightly more scratched than it was when it arrived. But that's, again, you can change the look of it. I tend not to take too much of this stuff with me if I'm going to a client's house. I'll keep it really simple then because I've actually got to get all of this in and out of my car here and when I get there. And also, you never know when you go to a client's house quite how much space you're going to have. And it's lovely here because we've got our kind of laminate wooden floor and baskets look good against that, even against a plain wall. You could go to somebody's house and it's completely different styling and this just wouldn't work. The other thing that we also use in the studio, I have a selection of vinyl backdrops like so. Again, they don't need to be enormous. You don't need to buy the biggest sizes around because you're photographing a baby which is normally about this big. And even if you want some space around it, about this wide or this wide is normally plenty wide enough for any backdrop. Again, I don't take all of that to clients' houses with me. It's how much do you want to actually put into your car, take out of your car each time. So when I go to a client's house, that's normally the rig that I'd take with me, but with lots of different types of blankets and coverings for it that all fit into a little wheelie bag and can all just be scrunched in just to make it easy. So normally before I go to a client's home or before the client comes here, I'll talk to them about the sort of thing they like, the sort of thing they're looking for. Are they looking to buy one of the photo books that we supply? Or are they looking for just one large print to go on the wall? Or are they looking for a triple canvas to go above the children's nursery wall? Just so that I have an idea before I start what it is they want and what I'm shooting for. Because if they're looking for a nice kind of triple canvas set up, you're going to want perhaps a lovely photo of a baby laying there, full naked with its little cute bum in the air. You may then want photos to go on the left and the right of that with the baby looking in towards the middle. So you need to be aware that you're getting the variety to do that and how they'd fit together as a triple on the wall. And also, if they're looking for a photo book, then you need to make sure that you're getting enough photos for that. In general, after a session, we will show a client about 10 to 15 finished images which is enough to go into a photo book and gives them enough choice so that they, they can choose between the different kind of hats and styles that we've used, but we're not making the choice too difficult for them. So that's everything you need to cover the basics of getting started. So that's all for me for now. I'm Lisa Beanie for The Photographer Academy. <laughs>